Hey guys, welcome back to another Ancursus tutorial. Today's Ancursus tutorial is going to be part number 9 in my Making Snake and Ancursus tutorial series. If you haven't seen the uh, previous 8 tutorials, uh, I recommend going to check those out first, otherwise you're going to be a little lost here. I'll put a little card up above to that uh, playlist. Uh, in today's tutorial we're going to be handling the user input, so we'll be um, basically implementing the process input uh, method that we've created in a, a, I don't know, a few tutorials back. Um, so for instance, if the user presses the up arrow key, we're going to change the snake direction to up and you know all the different directions. Um, if you guys don't have an understanding of n-curses already, I recommend going to check out um, my other tutorial series that's just basic n-curses tutorials. Uh, put, again, I'll put a little card up above to that. Um, if you guys like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this in the future, consider subscribing down there. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave those below, and I, I try to answer pretty quickly. Um, you know, you guys really help a lot. You guys inspire me to keep these videos coming out. Uh, if you want to help the channel out a little bit more, I've added a little PayPal donate button down below. Every little bit helps. So without further ado, let's get started. So there's four main files, or actually three main files, main files we'll be editing today, and then the make file, I don't know if you guys are using a make file, but if you are, there's one edit I'm gonna make to mine, just because I realize that it's not properly checking for all the files. So I'm just gonna make sure that this source line here says source slash star. What this is gonna do is it's gonna make sure that if any of my source files change, that it knows that it has to recompile the, the program. So with that out of the way, I'm just gonna exit out of that file because we're not gonna be touching it for the rest of the tutorial. Um, so yeah, today we're going to be basically implementing this method here, this process input method. So we're going to be doing that by uh, using a little switch statement here, and we're going to switch on the input that we got from board.getInput here. Um, but before we actually start adding cases to the switch statement, I want to be able to use the arrow keys. And the way NCURSES works is the arrow keys are not... Um, they're not handled by default. You have to run a specific function first called keypad. So that's why I have board.hpp open here because this is where we're gonna uh, run that keypad function because the board is responsible for the view, the window. Uh, so that the responsibility of that should be in the board function. So, I'm sorry, the board class. But I, I say I mix up function method uh, class all the time. I apologize, but so down here in the construct method, um, we're going to add the keypad call, which is just keypad, the name of the window, which in our case is board win, uh, and then a Boolean value, either true or false. We want to set it to true, and what this does is it allows us to capture the key, the, the um, arrow key input. It, it actually allows you to uh, capture a lot more than just the arrow keys. It allows you to capture the function keys and stuff like that. But um, for our purposes, we just need the arrow keys. And what I mean by it allows us to capture the arrow keys is it creates a couple um, helpful constants or it defines a couple help helpful constants for us that we can use in a case statement. So uh, for instance, we can say something like case up or case key up. And what that does, key up basically represents the up arrow key. So I'm gonna support the arrow keys as well as WASD. So we can do another case here for W. Uh, so if you're not familiar with case statements, basically what this is doing is it's saying if they press the up arrow key or the W key, um, you know, do something down here. So do something. So if they pre press the up arrow key or W, it's going to do something. So I'm just going to copy and paste this uh, three more times because we have um, four different directions we can have. And then I'm also going to add a default statement down below. I don't know if it's really required, but um, just in case, I always like to throw one in there. We're, we're not going to put anything in this default case. Basically, this is just going to handle if they press any other key. Um, we don't want to do anything if they press any other key, so we're just going to leave it blank. All right, so this second one here, we're going to make key down. So if they press the down key, and the corresponding letter for that is S, uh, this one we're going to make key right, Oops. and the corresponding letter is D. And then the last one, I'm going to make key left. Corresponding letter is A. All right, now that we have these case statements set up, we can start actually doing stuff with them. So in the case that the user presses the up arrow key or the W key, we want to change the snake's direction to up. We're going to do that using snake.setDirection, and we pass it up like that. 
So we can just do the same thing in all these other cases, but changing the direction. So for down, we want to do down. For oops, for right, we want to do right. And for left, we want to do left, like that. So with that all done, uh, let's just uh, do a make and run to see how our program's working at this point. So you'll see that our snake is moving right. If I hit the up arrow key, I'll start moving up. If I hit the right arrow key, it'll go right again. If I hit down, I'll go down. If I hit left, it'll go left. But there's a bug right now. If we hit, if we're going left and we hit right, it like deletes a key, then it like weirdly redraws and then the key comes back or it deletes a piece and then it comes back. That's because you shouldn't be able to go the opposite direction from the direction you're currently moving. It's a bug. That's called an invalid move, or I'm going to call it an invalid move. So if we're going right, I'm not supposed to be able to go left. But right now, we're not checking for that case. So we have to check for that case in the code. So there's a few places we could do that. We could do that within the case statement here. But technically speaking, um, the business logic for the snake, in this case, I would call this the business logic for the snake because the snake keeps track of its own direction. The business logic in an MVC, uh, in the MVC pattern, should be delegated to the model, and the model is the snake. So we should really do that in the set direction function right here. So there's a couple ways we could go about checking for these invalid moves. We could have a bunch of if statements like, you know, if cur direction equals equals right and the new direction equals equals left, you know, return, because that's an illegal move and we don't want to do anything. But that's not very concise and uh, there's actually a more eloquent and concise way to do it. Um, so bear with me here for a moment. What we're actually going to do is go up to the top here and we're going to uh, update the enum. So right now, I don't know if you guys know this, but by default in an enum, uh, they just get, th these get assigned values from bottom to top. So this is I believe that up is set to zero, down is set to one, right is, left is set to two, and right is set to three. But we can actually assign them values of our own. So for up, we're gonna assign it negative one. Um, for down, we're gonna assign it one. So you'll notice that these are just opposites. They are the same number with the, a different sign. That's important. Um, so for left, I'm gonna set it equal to negative two. And for right, I'm gonna set it equal to two. So one thing you'll notice is all the illegal moves here add up to zero. So uh, like up and down add up to zero, negative one plus one is zero. Same with left and right, negative two plus two equals zero. But all the not illegal moves, so like if we were going right and then we start going down, that does not add up to zero. So what this allows us to do down in our set direction function is combine all those illegal moves into one single if statement. So what we can say is we can say if cur direction plus the new direction, and we want to check if it's not equal to zero, because if it's equal to zero, it's an illegal move. So if it's not equal to zero, then we want to change the direction. Otherwise, we're just not going to do anything. We're just going to leave it the way it is. Um, so if they're going right and they try to go left, we're just going to keep them going right, because it's an illegal move. So now we can make and run again. And at this point, it should be able to handle these illegal moves. So I'm going right right now. If I hit the left arrow key, it doesn't start going left. It actually advances it a little bit forwards just because that's the way that W timeout works. But um, so same thing, if I'm going down, if I hit up, it doesn't do the illegal move. It just keeps going the same direction it's moving. All right, so that is all set. We've got the directions all set up. There's one other thing uh, we're gonna do today and we're gonna basically set up the game to be pausable. So the way I'm gonna go about pausing is we're gonna check for the P character. So I'm gonna have it so that if the user presses the P key, it'll pause the game. And the way we're actually gonna go about pausing the game is we're going to um, basically just have a while loop in the while, well actually let me put a break statement before I forget. Um, we're gonna have a while loop and inside the while loop, inside the condition for the while loop, we're gonna call board.get input and we're gonna check if it's not equal to P. And I'll put a little thing there. So basically what this is saying is if the user presses P, we're, we're gonna enter this while loop. Inside the while loop condition, it says get another key from the user. And if that key is not equal to P, just keep looping. So until the user presses the P key again, it's just gonna be stuck in this while loop forever. 
Now one thing, we could just leave the timeout set to a thousand still, which is one second. That means every second it's going to run this loop again. But we could also set the timeout to be blocking. Blocking means that it'll just wait forever until the user presses a key. Technically that's more efficient because it means the system is spending less time checking our program. So technically you're giving CPU the CPU some cycles back. So the way we're gonna set the um, input to be blocking, just to make the program a little bit more efficient, just barely, um, we're gonna go over into our board.hpp function, or function, class, and we're gonna add a function, or add a method called setTimeout. So it's gonna return void, it's gonna be called setTimeout, and it's gonna take one parameter, timeout, and all the uh, function is going, or the method is going to do is call the W timeout function that we called down here on our board win and just set it equal to whatever timeout value is passed. So now that we've made that function or that method, um, right before our while statement, we can call board.setTimeout and set it equal to negative one. So negative one is the value used for blocking input. So this means that now board.getInput board is going to wait forever for the user to press a key. And then once the user has pressed P again, we want to set timeout back to 1000, like that. So this means that, um, I'll just walk through the lines here. If the user presses P, it'll set it to blocking input. It'll enter the while loop and it'll reach this statement here. And it's just going to wait forever until the user presses another key. If that key isn't the P key, it's just going to loop back and do the same thing again. It's just going to wait forever for the user to press a key. And then once that key, the user presses is P, it'll break out of the while loop, go down to board set timeout equal to a thousand, and then just continue the game like we were before. So just to demonstrate how that works, I'm gonna make and run again, and you'll see if I press the P key, it just stops executing, we're not um, moving anymore. And then if we press P again, it continues executing. So. That's it for this tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to be um, basically cleaning up some of the code here. There's a lot of repeated code, so we can consolidate some of this into methods. Um, that's just, you know, that's a common thing I do. I'll write some code, come back and be like, ah, this could be done a little bit better, or I could, you know, um, what's it called? I could extract some of the code out into similar code and then use a method for it. And then also in the next tutorial, we're going to be fixing a bug that um, I accidentally introduced in the last tutorial. Bugs happen, everything has bugs. Um, it's totally normal in the development process. Uh, so you guys get to see some you know, iterative development here. Um, so the bug actually is, if you run right now, you'll see anytime we reach an X value for the apple or a Y value for the apple, it's going to add another piece to the snake. See, it just added another piece, there's five now. And if I go down, you'll see it adds another piece to the snake. So now we have six. So that's a bug we're gonna fix. It's actually a really simple bug to fix, uh, but we'll fix that in the next tutorial. But yeah, I hope you guys liked this tutorial. If you did, again, consider giving me a thumbs up. If you want me to see more tutorials like this, uh, hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, again, leave a comment down below. I respond to those pretty quickly. And if you wanna really help support this channel a little bit extra, uh, consider donating at the PayPal donate button down below. Hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you like this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one.